Howdy, folks. Welcome into the Smite Challenger Circuit. It's week number four. It's SEC Sunday. We find ourselves in North America. Dimes here. Got you for play-by-play. -play. My good pal Spooky Mars joining me as my phenomenal analyst. And Spooky, it's week number four. We're rounding out Smite here on this Sunday evening, night, wherever you are in the world. And there's only five weeks in this first phase of SEC play, which means we're coming to the end and we're wrapping up looking for a path to Masters here. These teams are going to have to get on it. That they will. And the Valkyries, they're on their path right now. Two and one is their current record. They took a little bit of a stumble last week in their match. Not quite as clean as they want it to be. Ended up, in fact, losing that match. That's where the one comes from in their record. But not all doom and gloom for them. They still have time to make that a three and one record. The most importantly, they want to avoid that two two split. That's what they're really looking to do. And with the team lineup, which you've all become familiar with, it shouldn't be too hard to do. It's a star-studded roster. We've been over it many times. It's really down to the Scorpions to take the fight to the Valkyries. And once again, it's another very good roster that you're looking at over there. I mean, you can take a look. It's Heed, Miji, Arenary. We've seen all these players multiple times through the SEC. This is looking to be an explosive match. Well, Spooky, you said it best with the RU Scorpions looking to fight up into the star-studded roster of the Valkyries, it all kicks off in picks and bans. Let's kick it off right now, head into P's and B's for game number one. Of course, as always, here in the SEC, it's a best-of-three format, and the RU Scorpions certainly looking to either take it with a quick 2-0 or at least force it to a game three. And coming into games like this, you never discount anybody in the SEC. It, the competition is so tight. But, I mean, you said once, you say it a thousand times, it's, it's so hard to discount this team or to overlook this team. Aquarius, Sam... Crimson Gamma Wow. I mean, this is a, a literally an SPL roster yeah. here in the SCC leagues. It's it's tough to put anyone up against those names as the bands come through. A couple of shots over the RU Scorpions jungler there with Naja Sirket going off the board and Yemoja taken down by the Scorpions here. Now, something I do want to talk to you about: Sam for Soccer playing jungle for the Valks. We've seen some more. We'll call them eclectic picks coming out of Sam in the jungle. Do you foresee any kind of shenanigans here tonight or they really want to lock up that uh, three, one going into week five in a path to masters uh, lock. I would prefer to see them go with something a little bit more orthodox, something that we know Sam a little bit more for rather than sure. his SCC mage jungle picks at this point in the season, you know, it's like you said, we're in week four. There's only five weeks. You really want to take this time to solidify your record. You want to be, positive heading into week number five there so oh God, maybe Achilles. don't look for the Scyllas though maybe don't prioritize those Agni jungles right sure. now I'm looking for things like the Sistana I'm looking for things like the Mercury that we know Sam can execute on so very well seeing this Hercules though doesn't surprise me in the least another Please, high priority pick and away the Guan Yu the Vamen still an option mm -hmm. the Martigris picked up by the Scorpions could be the Hunter for the dual lane could be a hunter or the enemies. mid lane as well. Personally, I prefer seeing him in that mid lane. I think picking up this Terra here is almost a bait from the Scorpion. It's almost a, a signal saying, hey, here's our duo lane. And then we can then just switch the Marty into that mid lane a little bit later and kind of mess up some of what the Valks might be expecting to do. I mean, with the Valks, though, it's almost like... Do you even need to play into some sort of strategy that, you know, the, the enemy team is bringing, right? You kind of just, with this lineup, you kind of just take your picks, you draft a, a competent uh, team strategy with this thought that you may pick up already a great CC lockdown, insane team fight composition here so far from the Valkyries. But you don't really have to, like, play a mind game if you're the Valkyries. You kind of just pick your picks, you scale up, and you win the game. At least that's the idea. Obviously, dropping one game last week shows that the Valkyries, they can bleed. You know, they're not this impenetrable team that can't be overcome. They have some weaknesses and they can be exploited. Are you Scorpions looking to find some of the chinks in the armor here with this third pick? And it's going to be that Vamana that you were talking about a little bit earlier. That'll head into the solo lane. Ooh, yeah. And as we head into the second band phase here, are there any particular gods that really stick out to you that got to go from either side? Uh, Ishtar and Kurnos are the two big ones that you can look at sure. right away. Those hunters Wrong still too. on the board and Scorpions are going to go ahead and take that one off as well. Aphrodite and Hell still options. Now, normally we've been seeing them in the support role. You already see a Ymir over on the Valkyries. But frankly, 
I'm just not convinced that it's not a jungle Ymir. This, I'm just not convinced right now, Dimes, that the possibility exists. So if you are the Scorpions, maybe looking to ban one of those away, they do opt instead for the Hunt Bots. On the one hand, I like that, right? Hunt Bots is a very good jungler. You know Sam can play that jungler. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, I can't remember the last time I've seen Sam play an assassin in the jungle rather than a mage or just something a little bit off kilter. So it almost feels a little bit weird to ban away the Hun bots because it just doesn't feel like something that Sam is going to be going for right now. Sure. And when I think for Sam for soccer, I think uh, setup, I think hyper carry, I think something with a lot of carry potential. I mean, obviously setup inherent in the kit of Hun bots there, but maybe something a little more impactful here for Sam as Rom is the pickup from the RU Scorpion. So Ishtar still on the board. Valks can choose to go that direction if they want to, which is kind of the classic pick here between uh, Rom, Kern, and Ishtar. Go. It's going to be the Jing Wei. We've seen her a couple times, actually with a, a great uh, win rate in the SPL. Kind of surprised we're not seeing a little bit more of her. I think maybe a little bit undervalued right now. And Sam is going to have the final pick here for the Valkyries. Supposedly. Supposedly he'll have the final oh, pick. And... But, yeah, oh, that's... is it a Mercury? Is it? This. We've been blessed tonight, Dimes. Traditional team comp. Let's <laughs> go. Traditional team comp. Now, it does raise the question for me of why go this Jingwei with the Ymir. Generally, if you're going for the Ymir, you're looking for a little bit higher pressure. You're looking to fight a little sure. bit earlier, make use of that Frostbite pass where you just deal more damage. Jingwei you. isn't really known for being super aggressive in the early game. So it almost feels like a non-bow of sorts. However, you could argue that Ymir's pressure is to counteract Jingwei's lack of pressure. If you're going against a Terra and a Rom. You're probably not being super pressured anyway. You've got some time to scale up. Bathasur is the last pick. I think we're in for an interesting jungle matchup here, to say the least. Can't help but agree, Spooky. Martikoros headed to the mid lane as we head into game. Number one here between the Valhalla Valkyries. And the RU Scorpions. It is, in fact, Artikaras in the middle lane there for Baroneri. And just looking at these two squads now, we've got them both rounded out. I mean, the Valkyries, seems to me, Spooky, that they just have team fight in spades. But, I mean, almost the exact same thing could be said of the Scorpions here with that Terra Global Ultimate and, and Heed wrecking havoc in the back line. Is there one of these two squads that you're looking to get online a little bit more early and kind of set the pace of the game? I think it's kind of on Miggy on this box of sort of try setting the pace of the game. You have in your mid lane, Baronary on this Marty. Those are both fairly decent in the early game. Sure, Baka does scale a little bit harder into the mid game. But whenever you have a an ability-based hunter like this Marty, you inherently have a slight advantage in the early game because not only will your abilities be dealing good damage, your basic attacks are also going to just be dealing more damage than the mage on the other side. So you're wanting to find a way to get some pressure there and kind of use that to exert more influence across the map. Looking at things, they've got a pretty good time going to that left side. Gamma on this Ymir is highly immobile. And Wowie, while he is a very safe character on this Jingwei, doesn't offer a whole lot in this early game so far. So if you can, take Miggy, put some pressure on this mid lane, find an opportunity for Baron Airy to make a rotation, put all that attention towards this left side, and if you can accelerate Anxious and Gaijay, you're looking pretty good come late game. You know, you just mentioned the immobility of Ymir there, Spooky, and that kind of popped into my mind after I saw this Bakasura pick, because I'm thinking back to some of the most unimpressive Ymir performances in the in the SPL, in the SEC, pretty much any competitive smite as Baron Airy there has to blow the beads in order to escape Sam for soccer in a special delivery. But this Ymir is unimpressive when you combine a high shred jungle like the Bakasura with a high CC team like this Terra, a little bit of a scrap in the mid lane here. Sam for soccer forced out with those uh, talons of Baron Airy, excuse me, of Miki slashing away. But those are the Butcher Blades, sir. Talons, Butcher Blades, Scythes, call them what you want, they hurt. Very different things. But talk me through, uh, Lockdown on the Sumir, followed up with some Shred from me. I mean, it's pretty easy to do. You have so many options available to you. You can hit him with the Root from Baronary. Oh my goodness, Biggie just got caught by the Special Delivery. Sam is just on point with those today. Or 
You can also uh, have Anxious just set up the Terra Walls. Tons of options there. Either root them with the Monolith, stun them with the Walls. Either way, you're locking them down. Now, ideally, what you want to do is root Gamma and then place the Terra Walls up so he doesn't have a whole lot of places he can go. Wall off the Amir instead of the Amir walling you off. And as long as Miggy comes in after Gamma throws out the Frost Breath or just jukes to the side of it, the true damage from Butcher Blades is going to shred him down quite effectively. However, you want to do that in the early game. The later you wait to do it, or the later you try to do it, the more health Gamma is going to have, the harder it's going to be to execute that game plan. So you have to balance how much you want to do it. This is a fight over a purple <laughs> buff, man. Like, they are really working for that purple buff. Did you see how many walls went out for that? <laughs> this... And that's another thing that, that you're segueing. It's almost like we're perfectly in sync here, Spooky. Walls are not Mercury's friend. When you combine the Ymir wall with these Terra walls and the amount of control and displacement you can have on the map, Sam is really going to have to pick his battles using that Sonic Boom. Walls can be Mercury's worst enemy or his best friend. Sure. If it's a well-placed wall from Gamma that cuts off a retreat path and Sam can just sonic boom into it without fear of overshooting or anything like that ah we're great they have nowhere to go that's perfect setup for sam however if gamma is slightly off or if sam pulls a little bit too soon or too late he could end up being separated from the fight with that ice wall so it's a delicate balancing act and you have to make sure that you're really all on the same page when it comes to placing those walls down is a team synergy and communication thing to make sure you're not accidentally breaking your own ankles when you're looking at these jungle fights. Oh my Oof. goodness. Ult for ult there in the mid lane. Huh? What? Oh, combination of Miki <laughs> running over there as both junglers hit level <laughs> five and six. Miki heading over to the right side of the lane. Aquarius goes down for first blood. Are you Scorpions picking up the first kill of the game here on the right side of the lane? It took quite a few ultimates. Sam for Soccer tried to look mid, which was probably the best play there, but that death from above is such an easy escape route. I mean, it's almost like, you know, it's a it's just a big red button you hit when you're in trouble and you get out for free. So meanwhile, Aquarius takes the spill over in the right lane. Sonic Boom used in the middle lane as well. Crimson. I mean, pretty much everything is down for all of the, the main combos here on the map. So we're going to have a, a little bit of a respite here. Maybe some, some action in the duo lane, though, with that Terra ultimate and the snipes from Rama online. Yeah, six ultimates down. Notably, Wowie's airstrike is also on cooldown. Not oh, sure true. what forced that out in the duel lane, but it does mean that he's a little bit more vulnerable now. This he's would be a very good time for the Scorpions to start looking over that way. You can see they're kind of stepping forward, anxious, trying to scope out that purple buff, trying to find where they can actually put their attention on this map. Probably just getting a ward down. You can see that Wowie is still in the lane. I am trying to steal this one away. Oh, no response from the Valkyries. Shouldn't be all that hard. But keep an eye on that upper side there. They're invading on the other side. They know where Anxious is. They're going to go ahead and try to take away the Scorpion's purple buff. Guy J might be walking into it. Ooh, oh, that's the gold. This is not going to be ideal for Guy here. Special delivery into the wall. Wall from Ymir doesn't exactly pan and out. Die. Actual barrage. One shot, two shots. Sam dropping low. Terra ultimate as well. Oh. Locked down. Sam for soccer. Dashing forward. Guy, one more shot. Made you look. Going to take out the ADC for the Scorpions. Freeze there on a Mickey. Stops any more aggression from the Bacacera. That was not an easy kill, but a kill nonetheless there from the Valhalla Valkyries. Returning it. Grabbing a purple buff for their effort as well. So returning the kill. Evens it up here. One to one on the board. Slide gold lead for the RU Scorpions and Terra to get the purple buff. How about that? Uh, I think it's a little bit criminal <laughs> that Guy J's last Astral Barrage shot did not connect with Sam. It looked like it was on, but it actually just did not do any damage. Slightly off the mark was that one. The Valkyries able to exert some pressure over to this left side, make their presence known. But it's like you said. Scorpions do currently lead just ever so slightly in the gold part, and partially because they were the ones who ended up with the first blood bounty, so that's just a little bit more going their way. But also, they've got Miggy on this Bakasura, who does clear camps pretty quickly, especially with the Golden Blade online. 
Yeah, Sam is going to do the same thing now that he has his Golden Blade. But the fact of the matter is that Mickey just has to deal less damage to his camps than Sam does. He could just get it right to the threshold he needs, gobble that minion up, put it in his belly, start walking to the next camp. It's just that quick for him. Valkyries have been trying to put some pressure around these side camps. They haven't had a whole ton of success so far. Crimson has been playing very safe. Trying not to move out of this lane too much. Mickey, on the other hand, looking for some invade opportunities. Not going to find a whole lot. He is heading towards that mid lane while Sam has left. Sonic Boom. Good beads there from Guy. But Sam's not done. Diving <laughs> on the tower. Wowie and Gamma on the way. But so are a couple of members of the RU Scorpions. And I I mean, you could feel Sam clenching there, wanting that so bad. But oh, he wanted knowing it. Knowing <laughs> it probably wasn't the smartest play. So Sonic Boom. Traded for the beads, that's definitely a win for the Valhalla Valkyries. And now, I mean, Sam's got that timer locked down in his head. He knows exactly how long that CC immunity is going to be down for the ROM. So don't be surprised if he makes that rotation back to the left-hand side before those beads come back online. No, I would be surprised if he didn't make another rotation to that oh, left exactly. side. Guy J does have the ultimate available, so does have More. some form of CC immunity, a little bit of safety. Not quite as nice as the bees. It does just drop you right back down where you started. So very predictable is that particular safety tool. More of a way to buy time than a way to truly get out of danger. You know, look at Sam. He's not even left this left oh. side. He wants Sky J. He wants him badly. Oh, second form of CC immunity. Great timing here. Just great mechanics all around from Guy. Playing the beads, playing the ultimate. Sam for soccer off the mark there. Actually, perfectly on the mark with the special delivery, but just a uh, better button pressing there from Guy. So the RU Scorpions are going to escape danger. And Miki, meanwhile, just farming up. And, you know, Sam has been hanging around this left-hand side in the middle lane quite a bit, but not falling behind, behind rather, in farm at all to this Bakasura, who's, I mean, pound for pound, one of the best farming junglers in the game. Well, it helps a little bit that when you're on the enemy left side so much, you kind of get access to their camps as well. And that's something True. we've been seeing right. the Valkyries True. doing. They've been invading those harpies and looking for this purple buff in base. <laughs> Look at Biggie. He he's checking out the purple buffs, wondering, where is it, guys? Where, where did the buff go? Well, unfortunately, it's not there. I have to settle for the shield buff instead on that one. Sam did tick over to level 10 just slightly before Miggy. Partially that kill gives him a little bit extra XP. It's just the fact that he's splitting the map very effectively right now. And so far, Scorpions haven't really found a good aggression point. That's not the worst thing in the world. We did talk about how they have a slightly better early and mid, but they still scale very effectively into the late game. Like you cannot discount how effective he can be walking into the back lines. <laughs> These supports just having a good time. It's something about support players. They just don't seem to really care about running into people. They just kind of do their own thing if they happen to see someone. Always seems to be just a jump party, almost in celebration that they're not bored anymore. Holy. Wow, guy going down. Not even the, an opportunity to air to use the ultimate to use, just use anything. As the ROM drops super quick, Anxious able to get out of dodge there. Migi, absolutely no follow-up as well, and a quick kill. Put a second one on the board there for Sam, and more importantly, getting a stack on that Rage. That's going to be crucial heading into this mid-game with the Gold Fury Pyromancer on the table. Yeah, very big for Sam. I mean, guys, he just disappeared yeah, on just that evaporated. one. evaporated. Shout out to Anxious, keeping himself alive on that. Could have been dead to right. But place the Terra Walls very effectively so that he was, sure, cut off by Gamma's Ice Wall. But the Valkyries couldn't do anything to him because of the placement of his Terra Wall as well. Just placed himself in a corner. Ooh. Miggy also in a corner. In a bad spot, special delivery. Sam grabs a third for himself. Second stack on that Rage. Keep your eye on it. And now the Valhalla Valkyries are cooking with gas here. We got something going. Gold Fury not quite on the table, though, for this Order Squad. Pyromancer is certainly not a position for that as well. So the best that Sam can do off of that and Gamma is combined to check out the camps, get some timers online, smack away at Anxious a little bit. Unfortunately, I mean, Sam's clearly online here. A freeze on to Anxious. Wow, oh he's joined the party as well. Shards of Ice. Big boom there. Anxious popping the ultimate as well. And that's going to keep him alive for just a moment. One shot, two shot. Look at that final shot on Sam. Going to land it. Aegis comes up. Not clutch for Sam there's Guy. Turns the kill on the Valkyrie's jungler. 
Three to two, the Valhalla Valkyries leading the kills. The RU Scorpions advantage gold. Yeah, just a little bit too aggressive from the Valkyries on that one. I like the idea. Keep putting pressure on this duel lane. Keep trying to strip away the farm. Unfortunately, when you're looking for kills like that, you have to choose your targets carefully. <laughs> Miggy chooses his target to be the Pyromancer. Melts that one down, no problem. Well, the fact is, the, the Valkyries tried to kill Anxious there. And while that's not a bad idea, this is still the tank. He has mm -hmm. Guardian-based stats, mm -hmm. getting the Gauntlet of Thieves online, 45 stacks on that, so he's got some health, got some props. It's going to take a while to really take Anxious down. We saw the effects of that. He was able to take so much damage there. DiJ was unlooked at. Simply pressed left mouse button several times or one time and held it up to you on your interpretation of that. And he just got free damage off until the Valkyries finally said, oh, oh, hey, there's there's a damage dealer here. We should we should hit him. And then he just goes into the sky, puts Sam down. And that was another fight. <laughs> Ooh, speaking of going down, Gamma dropping low here. Death from above foot. Baron Neri putting the finishing touches on the support for the Valks. And it is all tied up here in the kill column, Spooky. The Valks and the Scorpions with three apiece. Gamma just stepping forward there and opening the door for the Scorpions to start this Gold Fury up. Wowie hovering around the corner. Dashing forward, though, his guy not afraid of Wowie at all. Astral Arrows. Uh-oh. Raj on point there. He just joined the party. Scorpions take down the Gold Fury. And this Vimana's not quite done. Sam Soccer wailing away on this Vimana, who's quite tanky He's and losing. happy to take this fight. <laughs> Sam forced to dash away. He's charging up that Sonic Boom just in case it's necessary. Don't think it will be, though. Good dodge there step. from Sam. And he is just not done with this fight. Wow, he's really the party once again, though. Wants to go back in, but I do not see this going well for the Valves. No, it's a Sonic Boom in and a retreat right back out afterwards. Miggy just pops his head over and bites a few times. Scorpions establish themselves about a 2,000 gold lead here, 14 and a half minutes into the game. Telling that Aquarius still on this right side of the map. He putting so much pressure at that Go Fury. There is a teleport available for Aquarius. He does have it upgraded as well. That made the active decision not to try to go to that pier and help his team out. Wasn't able to successfully grab that tier one tower either. Kind of makes you wonder where the Valkyrie's game plan is right now. Are they just trying to cruise until late game? May not get the opportunity, but he taking a lot of damage. Wow, he more vulnerable than anticipated here on the Vamana. No ultimate to his name. Sam for soccer just punches down the Vamana. Aquarius helping out as well. And this right side tower is going to fall right after. Anxious just looking around the corner, but too low health. Is this Terra to really defend anything? Gamma walking into this right side of the map here. Tier 2 tower, you can kind of feel the Valks thinking about it, but uh, not quite willing to gamble their dice on that one. And just an easy kill on the right-hand side there, but I, I, I get what you're saying, Spooky. I mean, it, it doesn't. It feels a little disjointed from the Valks. I mean, they're walking down single targets, but they're not really taking anything for it. We haven't really, I think, importantly seen Crimson come up big in these fights with, you know, a big Thoth ultimate, and that might be the real game-changer for the Valkyrie squad. For sure, it can be. And I, I do want to talk about this real quick. Since it's been pointed out a couple of times, I wanted to get to it a little bit earlier. The Midgardian mail mm. on Gamma is first. one we do not see very often. It's the first item. He's not gone for the Prophetic Cloak. He's not gone for the Gauntlet of Thieves. He says he doesn't need auras. His team can fend for themselves. <laughs> he wants the Midgardian mail. He wants to slow down Miggy. He wants to slow down Gaijay. And this pulls double duty as well, because it also affects Baron Air. He was forced to ult. Gamma might get caught. Oh, Gamma getting shredded down there from the Ooh. Marty ultimate. Forced to back off just a little bit, but Baron Air getting hit with some shots in return. Sonic Boom comes Sonic. through on Anxious. And just so much shred between Sam and Wowie right now. The Pyromancer is going to go down almost as fast as that Terra just did. Now the Valhalla Valkyries really showing up here, clawing back a gold lead. Have claimed a kill lead for themselves as well. This tier one tower. Might be the next objective to fall here for the Valks, but Guy, meanwhile, pressing his luck on this left-hand side for pretty much free as Wowie's come in to stop the assault there. But, I mean, Sam is clearly, I mean, between that kill on the Terra and that kill on Vimana, Sam for soccer swing. 
Yeah, I don't know if, like, there was some trash talk between Anxious and Sam the other day or <laughs> something, because Sam is just gunning for personal. this Terra. Oh, <laughs> cool. It feels personal. He's just trying to walk back around his red buff, and he's getting Sonic boomed out of nowhere. Like, man, give me a break. But I do, I do agree with it, though, right? If you can take Terra out of these fights early on, that gives you a lot more flexibility on what you can push. Wowie. Trying to push for aggression on the guy. Jay Sam is here, but still is Miggy. Auto's not hitting. Sam able to immune out a couple of shots from Miggy. Trading shots are oh. the jungler. Sam able to come out on top just barely. Aquarius here to put the finishing oh, he's touches here. on the ROM. Anxious, forced out of the fight. Meanwhile, in backline, Heed is just late. A late rotation. Not able to save any of his teammates is the solo laner. So the RU Scorpions finding a couple casualties early on in this team fight. And now the Gold Fury is wide open for the Valks if they choose to look that way. Sam for Stalker forced out, forced mm -hmm. back, forced to heal up. And now coming back in, this Gold Fury is going to drop so fast. And there we go. There's the shred we were looking for. Oni Fury absolutely free for the Valhalla Valkyries. I like Crimson's decision there not to stay at that Fury because he already used his ultimate. He didn't hit anything, but he did use it. So it wasn't going to be there for secure. You don't really need the extra damage from Hieroglyphic Assault on the Oni Fury at that point. Just goes back, gets his farm. Now the Valkyries put themselves in a better position here. Now they have an actual lead, and Aquarius is feeling that lead right now. He's a big tanky guy right Ooh. now. A Baronary is not enjoying his meeting with him at all. This is just what these solo laners do right now. Baronary can try, can do everything he wants to to get away, but unless he ults, He's not having a good time like Guy J. Also not having a good time there. Sam is just so active right now. His rage is fully stacked right now. He's got a Deathbringer. Yeah, I wonder where they're looking next with the way they're moving. Might be looking at an early Fire Giant before long. It's just tough, man. I mean, 6-1-2, and two, Sam has a, a chokehold on this game, and he feels like he could kind of do whatever he wants, right? He, he's got the full rage, got the DB online, working towards, you know, the next attack speed item there on his build. And Guy J has just been the uh, the unfortunate receiver of uh, of the attention of Sam for soccer. He's anxious locked into the Fire Giant pit there with the Valhalla Valkyries. Rub Crimson hanging on this left-hand side. Looking for some shots over the wall here. Heat stepping forward for the RU Scorpions. Fire Giant still uh -oh. Still falling low, Crimson taking a few shots from the combination of Migi and Heat. Migi now, the focus for Sam for Soccer, who's forced out. Relic's forced as well. Baronary pushing forward onto Aquarius. Gamma is so That's low huge. in the back line here. And a great hold there from the RU Scorpions, shoving the Valhalla Valks out of this Fire Giant pit and delaying that objective for just a moment here. Aquarius, though, he's still in this pit. Still potentially looking for more. Does get those burned away. Scorpions, though, they're not in a position where they can capitalize on this. They can't go for the Fire Giant themselves. Mm -hmm. If he had been able to take Gamma down there, maybe you look towards that Fire Giant afterwards. But with a full 5-on-5, five five, simply not worth the risk. Crimson, a little bit dangerous on that position, has to watch out for the collapse from Heed and Miggy. They had great access to him. He was nowhere near his team. He was just trying to find those shots over the wall. And on one hand, you do want to be doing that with Toth. You want to be staying at range. You want to be behind those walls so you're very safe. But you also have to make sure you're not on the enemy jungle side when you're doing that. Otherwise, you're in a position like Guy J. Oh my gosh, up and down. That's the ult. Not even throwing out attempts at putting out some damage, just up down. Sonic Boom comes out onto the Bacchusera. Doesn't connect, but it does force the jungle ultimate in return. So it's going to be one for one wash there. And Spooky, I was just uh, glancing down at these build in these levels. You know, we're at 21 minutes here. 19, 19, 18, 19. Level 12 for both Anxious and yeah. Gamma. No wonder Gamma took such a spill in that last fight. He's level 12 with two items. Yeah, the supports have a little bit rough right now. A little I mean, bit rough? They're level 12, Spooky! <laughs> what do you mean <laughs> a little bit rough? It's 22 minutes to level 12! What do you, you mean know, a little it's... bit rough? It's not that they're super behind. Everyone else is just ahead. Aquarius, though, is dead. Speaking a little bit rough, Aquarius finding the grayscale for the next 50 seconds of his existence. Heat in the back line here. Forcing out Crimson. Looks like this middle lane Thoth is the target. Wowie up into the air, and Heat just wailing away on this middle laner. Forcing out the Valkyries. The Scorpions are taking 
advantage oh, here. Gamma. Gamma falling low, that level 12. Ymir, one more shot, he's gonna pick it up. And the Scorpions with an easy two kills there. Aquarius, a little out of line. Gamma falls as well. And the Scorpions are gonna back and maybe try to fire up this fire giant. And they are in a position where they can start looking at. We're 22 and a half minutes in. Miggy and Guy J together will absolutely shred. You add Baronary on. He does so much work on the zone by himself. No ultimate available. But with only three members of the Valkyries alive, it's a tough contest here. Crimson does not have Final Judgment available for the steal. It feels like they've never been on the same page. Baronary up in the ult. Aquarius Ooh. still trying to buy time. No ultimate online for the middle oh. lane, but Beat's still there. Aquarius locked down and shredded. Byron's doing so much massive Sonic Boom catches four, maybe even five there, as Wowie sends some crits the way of the Scorpions and finds at least one, but the Scorpions just chunked down by the combo of those AoE autos from Wowie and the Sonic Boom. What a Sonic Boom there from, from Sam. I mean, just changed the entire complexion of this engagement as now the Valks are going to start up this Fire Giant with the Scorpions looking onwards. Sam and Wowie combining to shove some autos this way at the Fire Giant. Anxious popping Anxious. the Terra Ultimate. Wowie's the target locked down in a couple of pools. Valkyries find the Fire Giant. Anxious going down for his trouble there. Gamma playing the Space Creator. So the Valkyries find a couple of kills. Only give up Aquarius. Grab a Fire Giant. And what was originally a gaff for the Valkyries has turned up their way. A gaff, you say? A gaff, That's Spooky. That's one we don't hear very often. I'm, I'm tempted to give you a little bit, of a, a little bit more for that one, but we'll we'll go ahead and roll on forward. Valkyries find themselves a fire giant, twenty five hundred gold lead right now. This is what they've been playing around. This is why supports have it rough. All right, Gamma stepped all the way up there by himself and was able to create the space. Now, I grant you, that is partially because Scorpions have a full physical team minus this Terra. And all Gamma has to do is stack these physical props on top of themselves. That's why he goes for the Midgardian male rather than the Gauntlet of Thieves. He doesn't need the mixed props. I wouldn't be surprised to see a Sovereignty come out from Gamma in a little bit here as well. You can see, going for that shirt there first. Now with the Fire Giant around four members, expect to see some pressure being put towards these Tier 2s. Game isn't so far gone for the Scorpions that they can't defend around these Tier 2s. You can see from their positioning, there's a little bit of hesitance to go that way. They're around their Phoenix, Heed all the way on the right side. Valkyrie's splitting the map here, taking the objectives they can. Only two on this left is a little bit risky. Oh! And the Rub Crimson finds Miggy, not that risky apparently. Anxious falls down low in this left hand lane. And Miggy, no ultimate burn. Beats oh down my. as well as the Sonic Boom comes through onto Anxious Guy up into the air. I catch the flak when he lands back down. A pull in on a Baronary who immediately heads up into that CC immune ultimate. And a shot there out of Crimson takes down Anxious. Two members down for the RU Scorpions. The Valhalla Valkyries take down the tier two on the left hand side. Left hand bird, the next target here for the Valks, shoving forward. Xanthar Soccer leading the charge, wailing away on this Firebird here, but dropping low to some shots from Baronary. No defense from the RU Scorpions on this left hand side. And how could you with your biggest team fight ultimate? in the underworld for the next 10 seconds, and Migi with just a giant AoE shred fest, also offline, I mean, potentially losing the two most critical members of a defense. And yeah, Migi... And their left-hand bird in the process. Migi getting pretty much one-tapped there yeah. at the, before the fight even began, so it really made things look a little bit rough, because that opened up the flank for Sam to actually find that sonic boom. And you can see why they're targeting Anxious so much. I mean, I still feel bad for the guy. <laughs> but if you can take this Terra out and remove the Terra ult from the equation, every single team fight becomes so much easier. And the fact is the Scorpions have not been positioned so that when Anxious gets targeted, he can just pop the ultimate and start turning the fight for them. But we seem to play a little bit more together. They cannot be caught out separated from each other like that. Because that's what the Valkyries are really preying on right now. They are just picking these lone members off, throwing them to the gray screen, and then they just look at the rest of them and say, okay, Scorpions, what do you have left? Is there anything left in the tank for us? Eh, well, 
Arenary has his ultimate, but is he being used defensively? Gaijin has his ultimate. It's being used defensively. It doesn't feel like the Scorpions actually have any tools to fight against the Valkyries right now because the Valkyries are consistently starting off on the front foot. Every time they start the fight, the Scorpions are in a bad spot. Now 6,000 gold down, may not have too many more opportunities to change that. Around this Fire Giant should be the next place the Scorpions look. Fire Giant back online here on this right-hand side. Both of these squads grouping up around it. And Spooky, I noticed that Miggy so scared of this Sam for Soccer Mercury that he purchased the Spectral Armor. <laughs> Didn't turn up in that last team fight as Aquarius is looking to get things started here. Yeah. Heed shoving forward once again. A rough crimson the target there. Aquarius dropping low, shredded down by the Marty Ultimate. Big. Sonic Boom comes through. Doesn't catch any critical targets there. Miggy takes out Aquarius to start things off. Able to jump out as well. Gamma falling low. Gamma falling down. A rough crimson oh. sitting through that final judgment. Not catching Anxious. Not catching Miggy as well. So a two for nothing for the RU Scorpions and a reversal of what we saw in the left-hand lane. And now the Valkyries have absolutely no chance of starting up this Fire Giant. Crimson, can he catch heat here? Not nah. around the corner. Maybe looking at uh, uh, Guy J on this ROM here. I mean, just uh, Aquarius and Gamma. He's back. Shred it down. I don't, I don't know what more to say, Spook. Yeah, it really was just Miggy finding the right position there. Able to put himself so far back in that fight that he was really just in the retreat path of the Valkyries. Drop the regurgitate, shred it, Aquarius. Now, Scorpions look for this Fire Giant themselves. Can the Valkyries stop it? The Sam around the corner. Scorpions take down the Fire Giant, but he may pay the price for Ooh. it. Rub Crimson takes down the solo laner. Migi blinking forward. No regurgitate online, though, for the Bakasura. So, Sam for soccer. Safe for the moment. And the RU Scorpions, I mean, they are screaming worth every day of the week. If all they lose for the Fire Giant is heat, like, yes, sir. Yeah, definitely a favorable trade for the Scorpions this time around. This really is a back and forth game, but look at the map. Look at where these teams are placing themselves. Left bird still down. Fire minions to contend with on that left side for the Scorpions. And with he dead for 30 more seconds, Ooh. look at the damage! Oh, starting things off a Baronary there. Sam is in the back line, but a Crips is oh. going to the shots out of Guy. Sam turns it right back around on the mid laner for the Scorpions. Able to escape dodge there for just a moment. Wow, it's Sam forced out. The bird coming back on the left-hand side in the middle lane defense successful as well. So Baron Airy falls, strip Fire Giant off of your mid laner there. For the Valkyries with no more to their name, they're just gonna have to take some farm back off and I, I mean, wait for this next Fire Giant respawn almost, it seems like. I'm not gonna lie, Dimes, that was so well played from the Valkyries. Yes, they lost Crimson, doesn't matter. He didn't have Fire Giant, Baron Airy did. Right. The fact is they staggered those respawn timers so effectively it's not going to stop this Primal Fury from going down, but it's going to stop the Scorpions from being able to do really anything with this Fire Giant. There's still a Tier 1 tower in the mid lane, <laughs> and that's probably about the most the Scorpions are going to be looking for with this Fire Giant. Valkyries bought themselves so much time off of that and very effectively mitigated any advantage that the Scorpions were going to get. They are still in control of this game. Make no mistake. They're 3,000 gold up, and they have control of the map right now. They gave up the gold fear because it's not worth the primal fear. I'm sorry. It's not worth fighting over right now. You're not walking into three people with fire giant over to primal fury and saying, ah, you better give it to us. Nah, you're just going to hold on to the gold that you have on your structures and look for these opportunities here. No, he's got an ultimate online and is going to be forced into it. Under this tier one oh tower my. here in the Valks. They're electing to not give up this tier one for free. They're happy to take this fight into the RU Scorpions and Heat. I was thinking about that a little bit earlier when Erupt was just throwing some shots into Heat in the jungle, but I mean, Crimson's kind of wailing away on this Vamana. <laughs> not, not as tanky as I anticipated. I mean, it makes sense. You got the chin size online, got the hastened online, not exactly a, a full defense Vamana, but the damage is coming through for Crimson. And we saw that final judgment land on Baronary, and I saw it looked like 1,200 damage to kick yes. off a fight. And what, what a way to start it off. And, and you could see he diving the back line every single time for Crimson, knowing that's the crucial target for him to look at. And that's really going to be the game changer in this next Fire Giant fight, especially with that long-range confirm. 
Now, I mean, you can see the stats right now. He is working with 3k HP, only 149 magical protections there. Keep in mind, Crimson has not just Obsidian Shard, not just Spear of Desolation, not just Soul Reaver and the Staff of Mirrodin, but also his own passive giving him additional penetration on top of all of that. He is not standing long against Crimson's damage because he's just so effective at shredding these tanks down. And it's like you said, he isn't even the tankiest person that he could be right now. He's often for some damage items, be a little bit more effective when he goes in on the back line, but it comes at a cost. It always comes at a cost, Dimes, and that cost is not just the gold. It's also the survivability. Shield is good once you're in the Colossal Fury, but outside of that, and even inside of it, you're still taking a lot of damage. And the Valkyries know exactly how much damage they're doing. Aquarius stepping forward, making sure that the Scorpions cannot look at this Fire Giant. But the rest of the Valkyries aren't even at it. They're still farming up, getting the rest of their items online before they're ready to rotate over and start looking for the fight. We've reached that point of the game now, 33 minutes. This Fire Giant's getting looked at here by the Valkyries, where... Gold no longer matters. I mean, we're full build pretty much across the board here, minus the supports for the Scorpions and the Valks. <laughs> so it's going to be a, a full-on scrap fest. As Aquarius and Gamma at the front of the pack here for the Valhalla Valkyries. I mean, one big pull for Aquarius on a on a CC CCable target is going to spell the difference here. And you can, I mean, Aquarius wants it. You can feel it. He taking a couple shots here from Crimson. Anxious, just looking around. I mean, this is this is tense, Spooky. It's the Are You Scorpions not really a fantastic way in. The Valhalla Valkyrie is not willing to commit to this FG either. Keep an eye on Anxious here. He's opting for a damage oh, item. He's not super tanky, and there it is. Falling low, but able to get away. Mm. Ymir Wall not locking down Anxious for long enough for the rest of the Valks to follow up effectively. Either? Anxious. Be able to heal up a little bit here. Aquarius is getting chased out. He's made his rotation to the back line, but Sam is here to help Crimson fiend off that Vimana. Now the RU Scorpions have taken control of this Fire Giant pit. Pyromancer started up, but hear that sonic boom charging in the background. Wait for Sam to come ripping through. There it is! There it is! On to Heed, but able to just clear the path right away, and Sonic Boom doesn't find any value. That's a massive team fight ultimate. And Crimson, look! Crimson used that final oh judgment as well. Those are two huge ultimates on the side of the Valks. No longer available. It's not the worst thing it could be just yet. Valkyrie's still going to look at this Pyromancer. That's two Runic Bombs now to their name that they can use around this Fire Giant. And while it's not the best look, Scorpions don't seem to be pushing things too much here. They recognize that these ultimates are down, but they're not recognizing the window that they now have. This gold lead... Only 4,000. It's gotten smaller and smaller. Fire Ooh. Giant now being burned down by the Valkyries. It's just a bait, though. They're looking for the fight. Aquarius moving forward. So is he. Both solo laners playing backline diver here. And the Valks have moved off of the Fire Giant, not willing to take any more damage Maybe. than necessary. Check it out. Spook a Spear of Desolation picked up for the Terra. Yeah, we saw that Spear coming through. I'm not sure I like that decision there from Anxious, because we've seen the attention that the Valkyries have been putting towards this Terra. At that point, you, you're kind of wanting to increase your survivability a little bit. Now, I understand what we're looking for here. You want your CC up a little bit more. You want that monolith to be doing a little bit more damage. Most importantly, you want to be able to keep using your ultimate. But the way that they've been focusing Anxious, the death that he has so far... I'm not sure that damage is the right way to go right now. It's going to be just all the more easy to kill this Terra. You can see he's pretty tanky as it is. Did go for the Sentinel's Embrace to give a few extra protections both himself and those around him. Have to be very careful because one misstep around this Fire Giant could be disastrous. We're at the EFG now, Dimes. This is the game-ending objective for either team that can get a hold of it. Maybe not for the Scorpions, still quite a few structures come to burn through, but look at the way Valkyries now decide to split this map up. Wowie, hand Sam, burn it! And that's the ghost signal for the Scorps. Immediately, the Scorpions collapse onto this Fire Giant. It's gonna be a coin judgment. flip, though. Crimson has ultimate online. He up into his own ultimate. A little more protections there, shredding through. 
is Migi on this Bakasura. Oh. Guy takes out Gamma to kick things off. He dropping low in the back line oh. as well. Guy with a fantastic... Sam's on it! Sam's on it! All of the damage out of Crimson and the Valkyries. Grab the Fire Giant on the back of Sam for soccer. They're 7, 2, and 6. Mercury that's been leading the way this entire game anxious. Whoa! Big crits out there from Wowie. Pulled in is Migi for the beats. Going to immune the damage and the CC from Aquarius for now. Sam and Gamma pay the price, but Fire Giant wrapped around three from the Valkyries. Ari Scorpion's just going to heal up, take this tier one, maybe a tier two. No but way. I mean, I mean, no, just a total retreat call here for the RU Scorpions. Spooky, break that one down for me, brother. Let's dive. The Scorpions have looked fantastic through this game. But if there's one thing I will say, they just seem to hesitate around these structures. They don't seem to be really pushing for anything on the map. They go to the Fire Giant, and they start up beautifully as soon as they see that the Valkyries have taken the Oni Fury. That's exactly the right call. But rather than saying, okay, we're either going to absolutely confirm it or commit to the fight, they split themselves, right? Some of the Scorpions go forward, some of them hang back and keep DPSing the, the Fire Giant. Then they hear Crimson is charging his ultimate up. They're like, ah, okay, well, I suppose now we'll leave the Fire Giant. By that point, though, they waited too long because Sam was able to rotate all the way around, come in from above, and keep the Fire Giant leashed for the Valkyries. I was questioning a little bit why Crimson decided to ult through the fight rather than confirm the Fire Giant. I think that is, in fact, why Sam ends up dying because he had to spend the extra time in the danger zone. At the end of the day, it's still the back line of the Valkyries with the enhanced Fire Giant. Still the Scorpions on the back foot here. Valkyries stepping up. They have to have an answer. 4v4 for the moment is Mercury and Vimana. Goodness. Out in the solo lane on the right-hand side. And Guy just... I mean, Crimson's a Thoth. It's 39 minutes. What did you expect, Spooky? <laughs> it's this left-hand bird. And don't forget, this bird has already dropped. It is a weakened Phoenix. Keep that in mind. Wow, why he's going to throw some shots into it. But the Scorpions charging forward uh -oh. here. A great regurgitate. Locking down Crimson. Who's going to fall to the might of this Bacchusera. Return shots from oh, Wow. He's swinging away with those big critical hits. Anxious locking down Aquarius. Bayronary. One more auto is going to find it. Wow. He finds a double kill. Surging there forward. Guy locked down by a great wall. Better freeze. A good push. Oh. Wow. with a triple. Anxious. What? Can he make it four? Charging forward here, Aquarius with a knockup. Wow, he's throwing shots into Anxious. Come on, baby. You gotta Come hit on, those. Come on, the Come on, you gotta hit him. Shot. That's gonna be a quadra. This left hand Phoenix is gonna go down. He finds Sam in the right uh, lane, but really, uh, who cares? As the Valhalla Valkyries are charging into the throne room here. Gamma solo. No ultimate from Heed. Shots wow, coming out from Wow, he crits. Not online. Aquarius, Aquarius. join the fray. I don't think the Valkyries have it, though. I mean, a Heed. Clearly not 20 seconds. willing to do anything, though, and the Titan is falling. Aquarius tanking it up. Wow, he just throwing autos for free into it. The the ABC! Take game number one. All right. So, let me give you a, a scenario here, Times, all right? You're the lone defender. You know the enemy has three people and no minions. You see Gamma, a Ymir, low health. And Wowie, a Jingwei with full health. Who do you go for? You said the Mir's low health? Yeah. So I could get a kill? Maybe. Or you could save your Titan by, by trying to pressure Wowie out. Or I could get a kill. Seems that you and Heed are of the same mind there. Because that is also Heed's decision. And I understand, you know, the idea where it's 1v3, your odds of defending that aren't super high. But when you look at the threat levels of those two characters, one of them is drastically higher than the other one in regards to your Titan. Would he have saved the game? Probably not, but maybe. Either way, it's a great showing from the Valkyries. The fact that they can get caught out, lose Crimson while trying to push for a Phoenix, and then still come back and win the fight anyway... It tells you all you need to know about their functionality as a team. They were firing all cylinders. They were on the same page. Look at how much damage Crimson did. 50,000. So oh, my God. And Wow is the one with the quadra kill. It's a crime. Speaking, 
speaking of 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 synergy, Spooky, I mean, the CC at the end between Gamma and Aquarius, the walls, the freezes, the <laughs> knockups, I mean, it was it was not stacked. It was spread out. It was timed. It was well communicated. And then Wowie, I mean, that's you're an ADC. That's what you do as an ADC. You sit back, you wait for the CC to come through, you throw your autos into things, and sometimes you pick up a quadra kill to beat the RU Scorpions in game number one here. <laughs> And it was not clean by the Valkyries by any means, right, Spooky? I mean, it was back and forth. The Scorpions had a lead. The Valkyries kind of clawed back. They maybe t threw it a little bit at the Fire Giant pit. It was a great defense uh, throughout from the Scorpions. Yeah. So I think the Scorpions doing well to fight into this uber-powerful squad and showing that, you know, the Valkyries are just mortals. Now you could say that the Scorpions have really shown that they've got some sting to them in this game. Yeah, we're going to take a break, quick, quick break, and we'll be back for game two, and Spooky and I are going to chat about a thing. Stick around. You. And I don't want 
wanna say, but the second that I wait, no, the words can't get to you. We push and we pull, it's wrong and it's right, it's not black and white. Howdy folks, welcome back into the Smite Challenger circuit. It is week number four, day number day number three here in the Smite yeah. Challenger circuit. We're in North America. It's the Valhalla Valkyries. It's the RU Scorpions. It's a game one victory for the Valkyries. Dimes, spooky. Not super clean from the Valks. Not as clean as maybe we were expecting going into it, but they do come out on top with a quadra kill going the way of their ADC Wowie in a spectacular fashion. How, what do you composition gameplay? I'm gameplay. not sure where to start, Spooky. It's gameplay, it's absolutely gameplay for the Scorpions. They simply didn't really do a lot, they had an advantage a couple times, and they just didn't really go for it. There were multiple times where they could have stepped up to a tier one tower, broken that down, gotten themselves some global gold in their pockets. Did not do it. I want to remind everyone game one ended. With the mid tier one tower still standing, <laughs> you're so right. So maybe change up the the gameplay, keep the composition the same. We'll find out in picks and bands for game number two here. Scorps desperately trying to go to a game number three. We know they have it in them. I mean, they took it to the Valkyries of points in that yeah. game. There were points where they had a gold lead. There were points where they were grabbing objectives for themselves, but maybe not enough map control to really shove it down. A couple of botched team fights in the late game, and the Valkyries pick up game number one here. Any compositional changes you would make? I mean, Sam looked great on the Mercury, but Sam's going to look great on pretty much any god he plays. Uh, Erupt Crimson on the Thoth, putting out 50k damage by the end of that game. Absolutely brutal as the Guan Yu comes through. I'm not I exactly like sure see... what you would switch up. From the Valkyries, nothing. I, I don't think the Valkyries need to change a single thing. If they want to do anything, they could swap out the Jingwei for something like the Ishtar and just give themselves more That's presence right. in the lane. I don't think they need to, but if they want to have a better game, I think that would be a place to start looking at that. The Jingwei scaled just fine while he picked himself up a Quadra kill, so not much to be said there. But it did take a little while for that to come on through. It did take them some time to be able to find that success in those fights. Where something like you, the Ishtar that they did pass over, a lot more utility, AOE CC, great shred potential, just gives you a little bit more bang for your buck, especially in that early game. Bands don't appear to be very different at all from either side, really. Mm -hmm. The Scorpion is not really considering anything to be a legitimate threat, and I think they also recognize that it was mostly just a gameplay feeling that needed to change rather than a composition. We'll see how much they decide to change in their draft. Valx, for their part, Aquarius goes right back to that Hercules. Didn't love Marty the Marty in the mid lane. Um, impactful in fights, sure. Also could have felt like maybe the Scorpions could have used some big AoE magic damage. You know, big, big Agni Bombs, big Kraken, you know, big insert magical team fight thing here like Crimson had as 
Marty and Tara are going to be pickups here from the Scorpion. So, so far, I mean, we're at 100% reprisal rate. The, the Thoth comes through from the Valks. And Spooky, are we're we a betting man. Right is this going to be the salty <laughs> run back? It, it appears to be a salty run back right now. I mean, we've got fans the same. Let's see who came Teams the, the same. Okay. The Horus is a new one. That is a change. I have a plan. Likely to be going to Gamma with support. I like to see that. A little bit more peel. Also some good pressure in the early game. Does a good job of kind of taking the fight to Terra. He got to run back that vomit. And I like that. He did look good on this pick. He's able to create a good amount of space. Might need a little bit more in the way of magical protections to really survive the onslaught from this Toth. But all in all, I can't say I dislike anything that the Scorpions are doing. The Marty did struggle a little bit against that Toth simply because of the range. But I think if you just put a little bit more pressure on the Toth in that mid lane from your jungle, that clears up a lot of it. It's not hard to catch a Toth out, force out the bees, just pick something that can force those bees. Maybe on the Bakasura, you've got Regurgitate. That's about all you're doing to try to get those beads out and that only works if you have a good position from the rest of your team to force Toth to say okay well I guess I have to bees to get away from this one but more pressure there and finally there's an adjustment Mercury gets banned out yeah the Scorpions clearly weren't happy with the way the the uh Sam played the jungle in the last jungle game bands. there and look at that four yeah four jungle bands from the Valkyries and the Mercury comes out and the I mean the Thor solo jungle but I mean six bands out of the jungle both these squads clearly they know who they're targeting bakasura picked up and i mean we are one pick away from the scorpions just running it all the way back clearly also echoing your sentiment spooky that the composition was not the issue it was on field play that they really need to switch up to make game number that's going to sam that's going to sam that's absolutely yep, that's going sam. to sam that's also it's going to Sam. Also Doesn't going matter. to Sam. Crazy how that works. And I gotta oh, say, Dimes, I... Aww. No way! Boo. No way! <laughs> it's the Hunbot! Make me zombie. eat my words. Oh, that's, that's he takes the... Disappointing! This is fantastic, Dimes. This is fantastic. The last time I watched Sam play Scylla Jungle, he missed every secure. Not just with Crush... Also with I'm a monster. With maybe the most securable god in the game. I vastly prefer the Hun bots here. I think this is fantastic. Look at what you've got to work with. So now there is a ton the of CC immunity on the side of the Scorpions, right? He's not going to care much about Fear No Evil. Marty, up into the skies. Luxor has a brief period of CC immunity, but it's pretty easy to wait that out and just drop the Fear No Evil on top of his head. It's Chernabog. Also has some of those utilities. So the thing is, if you're forcing all of those ults out with a Fear No Evil, that's a win. You you take that every day of the week. You are more than happy with that. Question is, how much will be forced out by the Fear No Evil, and how much will be used proactively by the Aru Scorpions? Valkyrie switching up their game plan. Eh, a little bit, and the Aru Scorpions almost 100% redrafting their game one composition here. Let's head into game number two, Spooky. And see if these compositions head the way that their teams want them to. I do want to talk about this Chernobog, this last yes. pick, though. And it's global utility, specifically. Guy looked good on the ROM. Like, the snipes were on point. Positioning maybe a little bit tougher against Sam on the Mercury. Do you think this Chernobog's picked up for a little bit more safety? Just head up into the skies whenever you're under pressure? This is 100% a Guy J comfort pick. He loves this turn of bog. You can see him on it all the time. And yes, I do think it gives him a lot more safety from the dive as well. Not just the fact that you can go up into the sky at a moment's notice, but also the fact that you can simply dash into a wall to buy yourself time, dash back out to create some distance. It's a very flexible, very safe pick, but it also scales incredibly well into the late game. I talk a lot about Rom being one of the best late game hunters, Chernabog is right up there with him. Massive steroid, great passive, adding health percent damage to the base attacks. It's on every third attack that hits, but it's still there. IJ looks very comfortable on this and expect to see them 
make a lot of rotations around the map. It's something that Guy J is not shy of doing. Expect him to see be getting pretty active on this map. My mind goes over to Sam on the Spoon Bots. Very early on, he was getting aggressive with the Mercury in game number one. Unbots doesn't have those same tools here in game two. So I'm not expecting the Valkyries to get off to quite the start that they had the first time around. Really, you're looking to wait until you get level five. Ooh. Wow. Oh, my heart stopped for Crimson there. Luckily, does survive. That's the damage that this Marty brings. And you said you didn't like it. I I thought the team fight could have used... Okay, you know what? I'm a chair one spooky. Stop. I don't get I don't get paid to analyze. I get paid to tell you what my gut tells me and my gut like the maze. But guess what? Baron Ari almost found first blood there. 2v1 in the middle lane, so clearly I'm eating my words already. You don't have to rub it in. Alright. Oh no, I I do. Yeah, that checks out. It's in my contract, actually. That, I would not be surprised if you built that in somewhere. <laughs> uh, I want to talk about Gamma on this Horus because for my money as Baronary is falling low to the combination oh, of Crimson and Sam. But Migi jumping in here, grabs one of those minions, throws it down his gullet, slashing away here at Sam. Baronary, a couple more shots. No Thorn to throw out there. Just uh, straight aggression, violence in the middle lane here from both of these squads. Yeah. Let me make my point. Gamma was we playing don't pay you to beer. Make you know what? Just pick something on the map and talk about it. No, you wanted to talk about Gamma on the forest. What, 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 what caught your eye there? I don't want to anymore, Spooky. You don't want to in. anymore. Look at this guy pouting already. I want to talk about it because I like this this pick for Gamma. Do it does a good job of matching. It was picked beforehand, but it does a good job of matching some of the rotational presence that Gaijay has on this Chernobog. But it also just allows Wowie to fight in this lane a lot earlier. And you can see him doing it right now. Adventious is falling low out of mana. A couple good walls, though, is going to stop the aggression. Oh, Gamma looking at this purple buff invade here. No jungler oh to speak of. Dashing back in his Gamma, but slowed down. And just popping that relic. Once again, out of mana. I mean, this is a tough fight to take with as low health as Anxious is, but with zero mana. That purple buff is going to go the way of the Valhalla Valkyries. A successful invade. It's going to bump their gold lead up to about 500 here, just three minutes in. Meanwhile, the junglers taking over to level five. Valkyrie's getting feisty here in the early game. We were talking about, you know, maybe not having as much early presence due to Sam being on a less early game pick. And, you know, the Valkyrie's just going to make up for that elsewhere. They're just going to go ahead and do it in the duo lane. Now that we're level five, as you mentioned, Sam has the Fear No Evil available. With the way the Valkyries are playing, and the way they played in game number one, I would not be surprised at all to see Sam start taking this ultimate over to the duo lane. They will want to find some way to force out Guy J's ultimate or Bs beforehand. If you can do that, then you're looking at a very tasty gank over there. Anxious, not going to be able to do a whole lot to stop all three of those people. Anxious is actually, critically, the one who doesn't have CC immunity. He's the target. Oh, Fear No Evil blown too early, though, as the Regurgitate comes through from Migi, forcing out Sam. Wowie and Dai boxing. Meanwhile, up in the air is Baronary, shredding oh. down Gamma, able to dash away. It's going to be a wash. Zero for zero, though, on both sides. As Sam almost paid for it with his life, I was going to point out, Spooky, a beads pickup here for Migi, so double CC immunity between the ultimate and the beads as he's fallen quite low against Aquarius in this right side lane. So extra protections for this Bakasura in the 1v1. Yeah, I think that's absolutely the right call to make. You know what you're up against. You're looking at Gamma on a Horus. You're looking at Aquarius back on this Hercules. Most importantly, you're looking at this Fear No Evil. You have to have some form of safety to prevent yourself from just being absolutely demolished by that AoE fear. And while it does feel a little bit bad that he can't go straight for the blink, you can see he still has plenty of damage. He just walks Crimson down. Golden Blade is online. Got some additional movement speed to help cover that distance. Overall, looking to play it a little bit safe. Likely to be counter-engaging on Sam for soccer. If he sees that you know, he will get dropped somewhere, you can bet he's going to be dropping the Regurgitate and trying to go right on in on that monkey and limit how much effectiveness he can have. 
kind of a odd rotation there on the right hand side. Sam, no ultimate online, so no lockdown for he. Just honestly, straight up stealing some farm from Aquarius before heading back into the jungle. Going back, just needed a little bit more. Finish off that transcendence, pick up a couple wards. So maybe a, a little bit of a back off here from Sam as he's looking to get some stacks on that transcendence. Yeah, it is going to take a him a little bit of time to get that online. I'm never the biggest fan of Transcendence. I don't play jungle, though, so who am I to really Ooh. say much there? Being forced out from Miggy. A little bit more vulnerable now to the Fear No Evil. Something like the Hoonbots, I just prefer the the Jotun's Wrath to yeah, keep man. that Fear No Evil online as frequently as possible. Now, Transcendence does give from CDR once it's upgraded as well. Don't get me wrong. But it feels... It's a very noticeable trade-off going for the power farming item rather than some early power pen and 20% CDR. It's not likely to have too big of an impact, right? He's still going to be able to make his rotations across the map, but perhaps not able to make quite as many as he otherwise would. It is looking up towards that purple buff. Perhaps the shield buff the target for Sam for soccer has been a priority for many a jungler since it was introduced. Gives them a little bit more sustain in that jungle. It's always nice when you can just take some farm away from your duo lane and then say, hey, now I don't have to take as much damage while I clear my camps. That means eventually I'll be able to gank you and I'll be healthier. We'll see if that's true or not, but I'm sure that's the excuse that the jungler sees. And I mean, it's working out for Sam, right? Got a, a level advantage in the jungle, level advantage in the duo lane, so happy to steal away farm on that side as well. Aquarius already knocking down both Bastions on this right-hand side. He's being Action. forced out here. Gamma and Sam combining in the right-hand lane, looking for this blue buff. And I highly doubt either one of these Scorpions are going to be able to contest it. Oh, oh, no. Back in his heat, and here comes Anxious. Not enough lockdown, and Gamma just immediately hitting that old button to get Aquarius nice. and himself out of there. A clean blue buff in vain. It's in the middle lane, Crimson oh. falling to some shots out of Baronary, who's out of position oh, at the very edge of Fear No Evil. Catches up the mid laner. That's going to be a first blood for Sam for soccer after Baronary gets a little bit too big for his bridges. Gamma's not quite done. Man, we are eight minutes in. That is, that's the first blood. We've seen oh, plenty blood. of fighting. That's the first time we've actually seen someone fully go down and Aaron Aaron was the aggressor there, had Crimson almost dead to rights. Man, you gotta have the those wards, you've gotta have the vision and be mindful of where Sam is. Maybe a little bit cheeky from Sam as well, since he had just ran away from the blue buff with his tail between his legs. Uh, it looks like it was just a bait to come over to the mid lane. I like this idea to kind of facilitate Crimson. If you can get this Toth a little bit further ahead, he already saw what he could do in game number one. Get him online faster and anxious. Just cannot catch a break in this match, man. Locked down, slowed. Gamma's here, Sam's here. It just has not let up on this left-hand side. And you're right, anxious. The target in game one and game number two here of Sam for Soccer's ire. And, I mean, we're stretching, not even 10 minutes into this game, Spooky. We're stretching into a, approaching a 3,000 gold lead. So, I mean, we're, we've only seen one kill, right? We've seen some invades on the left-hand side. Saw a shield buff taken away, saw a blue buff, but this macro farm is more than just a couple invades. I mean, we're pushing 3k gold at not even 10 minutes. This is just superior map play coming out of the Valks. I mean, the Valkyries have simply been able to take the pressure that they've drafted and apply it very effectively onto this duo side. In the first game, they had like okay-ish pressure, not a lot of mobility. So taking those purple buff invades was a significant risk. In two here, they take Rom, they take Horus, and they have a lot more damage. They have a lot more kill potential. They have way better clear with the actual arrows as well. They're able to rotate to this purple buff pretty much on cooldown. Add on to that that Sam is just farming like a madman, going for those shield buffs, looking for the blue buffs, taking farm away from the scorpions is what is really making the difference. It's not just how well are the Valkyries farming, but what they're taking away from the Scorpions. Scorpions simply can't get that gold. They can't get that XP. And that's where this deficit is starting to, to establish itself. He isn't able to have the same presence in this lane as he was in game number one. Aquarius is wise to his ways. And good gracious, 
the damage onto the warrior is just crazy, but look at the scorpions. They know where Sam is, and they go for the gold here. Smite 101, dog. You see someone pop up on one side, you take something on the other side. Are you scorpions? Take down the gold fury, utilizing that shred coming out of the Bakasera. And that one went down quick for 10 minutes with only a couple items online for the jungler and the ADC not even finishing off those devs' gloves. Man, that gold fury goes into the pockets of the scorpions. And that's a big time pickup. Wowie and Guy boxing out. Migi's making the rotation as well. See if oh, Guy no. can bait this dash from Wowie. Migi jumps in. There comes the dash out. Up, down, Guy J. And Wowie was just waiting, waiting for him to come out of the ground. Can you grab two with the snipe? Oh, Ooh, oh. this is both of them. That could have been a sick double kill. But sometimes you just got to pick one target. Spooky. I, I don't think that third shot is killing either one of them at that particular health percentage. I like the idea from Wowie to try to go for the, the two-for-one shot there. At that point, you might as well go for something flashy and cool if you know you're dead to rights anyway. It's a good response from the Scorpions. They know what they've got, and they've got what they have is two Hunters and true damage from Bakasura. Anything they look at will get shredded very quickly. It's just a matter of actually getting the carries onto those targets, and there's another fight here in the mid. Anxious, able to use the Terra ultimate before he goes down, and the final shot not oh! going through until Crimson finds him with a long range judgment there. A little hieroglyphic assault coming out from Erupt Crimson takes down Anxious. Good, fear no evil to set it up from Sam for Soccer. That was close, Spooky. I and mean, that was just rude from Crimson. I mean, and with if you're in a fight. And you get that far away at that health total, everyone's breathing a sigh of relief. They're like, oh my goodness, I got out. Thank goodness. What right does Crimson have to come ruin Anxious' day like that? Just shoots him from half a mile away. A great shot from Crimson, though. You can see why he favors this Toth so much. Wowie, ouch. Taking the worst end of that particular fight. You can see the effectiveness of Gaijay on this Chernobog. And that passive can really stack the damage up. And with the Dev Gloves fully stacked, Chin size on top of it. Gaijay hurts. He's going to shred anyone he looks at. But most importantly, he can really burn these tanks down. Gamma has to be careful. He does have a Midgardian mail once again. Putting quite a bit of focus towards counter-building these basic attackers. And that's really what you have to do in a situation like this. You cannot... Let Guy J and Miggy just do whatever they want. You have to have measures in place. Anxious though. For flank. Not able to find it. But both these teams are still feeling very scrappy. And Sam can't really even Guy drop J? the ultimate there with the bubble online. Guy comes in for Aquarius who's low on mana. But with so much speed. I mean, look at all those items online. How much movement speed Aquarius has. No shot that the Scorpions are going to be able to catch up to that Hercules zooming around the map. Crimson sends some shots. Anxious way doesn't connect with any of them. And once again, that Magi's blessing on Anxious. It kind of just stops all aggression from Sam until that thing can be knocked off. I mean, immunity to fear no evil. That's your starter. That's your team fight ultimate right there. And Anxious can just walk away from it. It's, it's just not worth burning. It. Yeah, it's a little bit of an iffy spot for the Valkyries, but they are still ahead. They're still feeling pretty good. They're very much on the front foot right now. It's just how far forward can they put that foot? Right now, not too far ahead of themselves. Maybe an inch or two in front of the rest of their body. They make no mistake, they are working on getting there. We saw what they can do scaling to the late game just moments ago. The longer this game goes on, the more I tend to favor the Valkyries. They have plenty of ways to strip this Magi's away from Anxious. Gamma can quite easily do it. Crimson can do it at range as well. Where's probably the most notable member, simple drive and strike. Passes through Anxious, no more blessing. You know, evil suddenly looks really good. And normally you wouldn't want to do that, right? Normally you wouldn't want to drive and strike into a Magi's Blessing because that puts you out of position, doesn't move the other guy at all. But if your follow-up is the massive disruption that is Sam for Soccer's ultimate... It gives the Valkyries a lot more leeway on how they want to play this. They can be a lot more aggressive than you would conventionally believe possible. And there's Gamma, just taking the blessing away. And she's going to have to wait about 70 seconds for that one to come back up. That's what you're going to have to do if you're playing this Gamma. Or if you're playing this Horus, rather. If Gamma's on this Horus, you just got to 
Strip away beads, strip away magis, with the Primal Fury making its reappearance on this map. You gotta make sure that everyone is susceptible for the attempt there. Pyromancer going down to the likes of Migi and Baronary. Easily shredded away here by the RU Scorpions. No response from the Valhalla Valkyries on the left side of the map. And we've seen how quick these objectives can fall to the Scorpions. So you gotta think that Sam's kind of locked into place in this middle left-hand side of the map. I mean, another rotation of the solo lane. And the Scorpions can just kind of knock down the Primal Fury for free. Yeah, the Valkyries have to be very careful and very aware of how much damage these Scorps can do to the objectives. But if you're concerned about how fast the Scorpions can do it, take it off the board. Do it yourself. Here we go. A 4-4 four four Baron Airy, Anxious, and Guy J teaming up to Ooh. take on this Primal Fury. It's dropped by the Valkyries, but Heed. picked right back up by the Scorpions. It's falling low. Crimson knocked up by a great rotation from Heed. Immediately forced out of the fight. Scorpions take down the objective. Leaping forward as Guy J through the air. Crimson burning the Aegis for a little bit of immunity. Shot goes to Heed, who's locked down under the tower and taken out by the Thoth Aquarius, taking on three members of the Scorpions in the back line. And Baroneri getting walked oh, here comes. down by the Hercules Damas rejoin the fray as well. Baroneri forces the Aegis. Wow, we bring it up the back. Throwing shots the way of Miki. Wowie taking down Baroneri. Guy knocked up, knocked back. Miki blinking in, but immediately sleeping over the wall to safety. Anxious though. Not quite there, Guy. Oh, knocked no. up once again and taken out by Aquarius, the mid laner. Miki has made his reappearance with that regurgitate. Crimson with a long range. Doesn't have it, but Aquarius is just <laughs> an absolute pet to the Scorpion's backline in game number two. Man, if you're four levels up on the enemy jungler, four levels oh up, God, wow, is. that is actually insane. You might as well just take that front foot forward and put it as far forward as you can. Aquarius just takes the fight right to their front door. I liked the play from Mickey to blink in and jump out because it did turn the Valkyrie's attention towards him. He wasn't staying to fight that. He was just trying to pull some of that aggression away from Guy J. And it worked! Uh, until Guy J got plucked by Aquarius again and sentenced to death. But it shows you where the Scorpions are thinking. They're still actively strategizing in this game. And I really like that from Miggy. It was a very proactive play. It was a risky play. But it could have paid off massively. For a moment it did, but unfortunately, the payoff was not to last. Now, Valkyries have taken a very solid fight. That was in favor of the Scorpions at the beginning. Scorpions even take away the Fury, but it's just too much aggression. He goes far too deep under that Tier 1 tower, eats an entire final judgment for his troubles, too far away from his team to actually have any help. Guy J <laughs> had to make the long walk back to his team. Uh, he's now positioning around Luba. Get out A-OK -okay using the two disguise. They have to be careful. We're only 18 minutes in. Hmm. hmm. Never they mind. do not have to be careful, Spooky, as nope. Crimson takes out Guy. I, it doesn't look like anyone was there to help the mid lane Thought. I think Crimson just straight up killed Guy in the middle lane, and now the Valkyries have a 25 second advantage. I, <laughs> uh, I, no analysis to be had, Spooky. He simply died. Hey, sometimes that's just the way it breaks down, Baronary. I'm gonna try to have some kind of answer here, but across the board, Valkyries are just ahead in XP. Most egregious is Aquarius, who's already level 20. Even Crimson, two levels up against Baroneri. Wowie, a level ahead. Gamma, not level 12 at 21 minutes, 14. but level 13 at 19. Drastic improvement. And this shows that the Valkyries are just feeling themselves a little bit better. They have more momentum, and they're firing a little bit more together right now. They're working all on the same page. They're not playing mm. quite as risky. I say that as Aquarius yeah, well, is Aquarius, up here. Aquarius is literally <laughs> doing whatever he wants against the level 12 Anxious and the level 17 Heat. Like, literally, Aquarius is doing whatever he wants in the back line. Him and Wowie moving forward. Gamma doing what... I mean, literally, they have as much space as possible. I cannot Wowie? Do, I'm not saying that enough, but Wowie up in oh. the air is able to successfully make it up, but it's oh. to come down to the likes of three members of the Scorpions. And maybe the Valkyrie's getting a little bit too cocky there. As Aquarius 
Sure, you can do whatever you want, but Wowie may be a little bit squishier now between three members of the Scorpions. Still okay as Aquarius, but Wowie paying for his life for literally no reason. Green No Evil comes down on Guy in this left hand lane. No beads burned into the wall. Sam, no follow up. There's finally the jump up into the ultimate goes Guy, but right back down overhand smash. Oh, a couple more shots out of Sam. Could put the finishing touches on this kill. Great bounce with the oh, double wow. bounce. Ensures that Sam is not going to be able to teleport back to Guy. And Guy should thank his lucky stars. He was able to get out of that one. Fall, but oh, Sam is he? not done with this oh. one. Ultimate end. Guy goes down. And both of the ADCs pay for their lives being, uh... I mean, Guy wasn't even out of position there. Damage just decided to end it all. Woo! Oh. Shot over the top there. Migi and Baron Neri getting double tapped by Crimson over the wall. Gamma. Yeah, we're still on it. Catch Migi here. Not quite a knockup. Was able to lock down Baron Neri. Crimson finds the damage. And Gamma finds the final <laughs> shot. And I don't know what's happening anymore. This, it's just like picks across the map. No rhyme or reason. I'll tell you how it started, right? And what it felt like was Aquarius saying, Wowie, man, look, I'm so far ahead. Let, let's take the fight. Let's take the fight. We can win it. I'm so far ahead. Wowie gets huge, three, man. Huge, dude. That's how it works. Gamma is simply playing the game how he wants. He's doing the Aquarius thing. We've notably seen Horus a lot in the solo lane. And I think Gamma's kind of got his wires crossed. He now is also... A solo laner, so he's just going to be ulting in on Guy J by himself. Because Horus just does things like that. Why not, man? Grouped up now are the Valkyries. Look at this tier two tower. Fire Giant around all five. This is looking a little bit more grim for the Scorpions than in game number one. The deficit is about the same, it's only 6,000. But the way the momentum is feeling, the way the Valkyries are playing this map, there's a distinct difference. All grouped up as five are the Valhalla Valkyries looking at this right lane Phoenix, but not quite nah. willing to take this one. Not at 22 <laughs> minutes. Fire Giant goes the way of the Valks, but this is just the first Fire Giant of the game. You know, take some towers, take some farm. I mean, there's no but more towers. towers to take. The Scorpions are completely exposed <laughs> to the elements here. But you can strip away some farm. Maybe grab some more items, pick up a power pot if you're so inclined. Our Scorpions are going to take some gold fury. Who cares? Aquarius does it, Crimson and Heed dive in on Heed. Crimson and Aquarius, oh, it doesn't matter that he's in his ultimate, because Crimson wow. just puts him in the ground. Who cares? Guy soaring through the air onto Crimson. Aquarius does whatever he wants. Gamma ults again, same goes to <laughs> Sam there. You know, evil catching two. Oh, Miki is going to be the next to fall to the mighty Crimson. who picks up a double. Oh. We saw a Quadra in game number one from the ADC. Can the mid laner pull off the same feat? Sending shots towards Guy's way. Middle lane Phoenix is going to go down to the mind of Wowie here in just a second, especially with those empowered autos. Rub Crimson and the ADC teaming up for that one. And the Valhalla Valkyries have skipped that middle awkward part where you kind of claw lead and, and slowly snowball it. And they've just gone to the point where you can do whatever you want on the map and apparently it doesn't matter anymore. As the Valhalla Valkyries now assault this left lane Phoenix after grabbing the middle one. Anxious. Anxious. Getting smacked by Crimson. There's another one for the mid lane Thoth. Sam for soccer, wailing away on Baronary. <laughs> Crimson by oh, the way from downtown. And now is sending shots for Baronary in the fountain. The left lane Phoenix hasn't even fallen. There it finally goes. I'm sure Gamma's probably going to heal up the entire team, because why not? Wow, he picks up Heed. <laughs> 13 to 2 for the Valkyries. And this Look at one is totally spiraled out of control, Spooky. He's by himself, just looking for more shots. What the heck happened? You know what? I, I've had a theory. For a little bit here, Dimes. And we might have to hold on to that. But oh, they know. Sam for soccer, Miggy, Crimson, damage, Baronary, overhand smash, picks up another one. That's a Dia side. 8 0 for a rough Crimson. And now it's anxious against the world. That theory will have to wait, Spooky. The Valhalla Valkyries <laughs> pouring shots here into the Titan, who is going to have no hope of survival. This Titan is looking at its final seconds of life here. As anxious falls to Crimson, put one more on the board. Why not? And now we're just farming damage. Able to survive his guy. Valhalla Valkyries take game two. That was disgusting. They were trying to farm damage. Unfortunately, despite deciding not to DPS the Titan because he wants to get one last ultimate off. Yep. Fires off too early. Goes off a second before the spawn comes in and just does no damage at all. What a shame. <laughs> what a shame. But honestly, it just makes you wonder... 
why did game one take so long? Valkyries what? clearly know how to push a lead. They know how to form a lead. Anyway, I'm going to answer that question. I do think it was because of the dual lane. I do think that because Wowie was on that Jingwei and Gamma was on the Amir, they just didn't have the same aggression. They didn't have the same tools to actually push for that lead. They couldn't constantly invade like they were here in game two. So they just had a little bit more pressure this time. They had more options available to them. And they went ahead and took them. They capitalized on their options. Crimson's 9-0 and 5. Why not? Scorpions just didn't have the answers this time. Wowie, the dedicated feeder there. Dropping twice. That is tough. Sheesh. Five. Wowie needs to clean that up in scrims. I mean, if the Valhalla Valkyries want to be a contender, as they're 3-1 and one now, heading into the final week of the SCC this coming week, headed towards Masters, Wowie's going to have to clean that up. But Crimson not quite going as sicko mode as he did in game number one, only 30k damage, but it was a much shorter game. And what was the switch flip? What moment sticks out to you as going from a relatively even back and forth game to the Valhalla Valkyries straight up having fun doing whatever they want and taking down the Titan in like what, 20 some minutes? I think so. The, the biggest moment where they just decided to have fun or where they started winning and controlling the game. I mean, I think those two things coincided. I think I think the most notable moment of them having fun is Aquarius invading Wowie into, <laughs> into the right side it's of Tier 2 Tower and dying to three people. I think where it all turned in their favor was right after that Gulf Fury, though, right? He chases all the way to the Tier 1 Tower, gets blasted, goes down, doesn't find anything for it. Scorpions are limping away, trying to scoop their gold from the Fury into their pockets and make it back to their base. Meanwhile, the Valkyries are just chasing them down from the skies, not letting them go anywhere. And that that's really the moment that things started to turn in favor of the Valkyries. They realized, okay, we're in control of this game. We decide the pace. And the pace we've decided is that the Scorpions will die. And so the Scorpions did. The Valkyries come out on top with a 2-0 to zero win over the RU Scorpions. That takes the Valks to 3-1 and one here in four weeks. And the Scorpions unfortunately drop to 1-3 and three with only one week left of play, Spooky. Both these squads are really going to have to fight hard for that path to Masters and that spot for the SEC team to come down to Alpharetta, Georgia and play for their smite glory. But that's going to do it for us here for the SEC for this week. We will catch you when we come back on Friday with Europe. You're going to want to see it. It's going to be the last week of the SEC. And we all see how it shakes out and who goes to smite Masters. So make sure to catch us then. Thank you so much for joining us today. For myself, for everyone here, for Spooky. Catch you then. Stay hydrated.